Hi everyone, this is Leather Ass for StockSpoker.com and the video I'm making today is of two tables of uh, actually a 400 no limit 6 max video on the left screen and a 200 no limit video on the right screen. And so I'm going to wait for the big blind on both of the tables. Uh, I just uh, it doesn't it isn't profitable to post the blind uh, in the cutoff, so um, I'm just going to wait for for it to be my turn. So in the meantime, I'll take this opportunity to observe the table and see if there isn't something I can pick up. Um, so I'm just going to do that for now. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I know I've played with Colonel Mustard a lot. He's a pretty good player. And I don't think I've played with these guys before. If I have, I haven't played much with them. I don't think I've played with Promi Chiswick, I think is his name. Uh, and I believe I've played a little with Black Zero One. Now on the screen on the right, I think there's a couple guys I've played with. I'm not exactly sure though. Um, so, well, we noticed dumbass five five five. Uh, he's got a donkey for a uh, for an avatar, and that might be pretty fitting because he just limped in on the button. Uh, I don't really advocate making that play really ever. I, I'm not sure I've ever done it. Um, you, that's a pretty sure surefire tell that. He's, he's probably not very good, but you never know. He also only has a half stack, so that's a good tell as well. On the table on the right, I've got some deep stacks, so I, I kind of like that. And we'll just uh, see if we can maybe get in some, involved in some big pots and maybe uh, come out on top, which would be nice. So it looks like the 400 no label, uh, you know, I do try to game select even for the video. And before I start making the video, I go through the lobby and I, I look for games with people I, I really am not familiar with. And while I like reads, I mostly look for unknowns because unknowns usually mean that they're not players who play for a living. And those are the ones I obviously prefer to play against. There's if I play against a bunch of guys who do it for a living, my win rate is not going to be as good as if I play against a bunch of people who, you know, do it recreationally. Uh, it looks like for some reason I, I skipped a blind here. So for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to post the big blind on the screen on your right when in the cutoff position. So the first hand I start off with Ace Queen, which is really good. Uh, I kind of expect him to raise right here. He raises a lot on the button, and he sure does. So there's no doubt that this is the easiest squeeze in the world, and it's not really much of a squeeze because I have a really good hand. So I'm just guessing that this, you know, Count Dracula here is not going to be a very good player. Uh, I haven't. You know, he sits down with kind of an odd stack size, and, you know, he cold called this raise, which is not, you know, there are hands you do that with, but generally it's just a bad player. If he calls here, we'll really know he's bad. Now, I don't ever advocate calling in a spot like he's put himself in there. So I get min raised from under the gun. I really have no idea what that means against this type of player. You know, it could mean a big hand, it could mean just junk. I have two options. I'm, I'm going to raise here. I could just take the initiative right away and just kind of try to figure out where I'm at, or I could just call. Um, I'm just going to call for right now. It's just not a situation I face a whole lot, so I'm not entirely sure what the best play is in that spot, but I think either one is okay. Uh, so he limps right here, and I'm definitely going to try to isolate him. I'm going to make it 20. 
so he limps in and then he leads out and I think what I'm going to do is try to get an idea of where I'm at right now and I'm going to toss in a little raise and if he comes back over the top or even if he calls I'm going to have to really think about you know if I want to continue on with this hand or not um, a really good board for me to uh, take down this pot on a continuation bet king 7 4 is just really unlikely to have hit him so if it does you know good for him but chances are he doesn't have any piece of this so I raise him and he still leads out but I picked up a flush draw now okay and so I get check raised here and I'm just gonna have to be done with the hand I don't think shoving makes a whole lot of sense because if he if he is on the over pair that I fear he's he's gonna call on that board so I think I'm just gonna call and hope to improve and if I don't he fires out big I'm gonna have a decision to make here I, I think I'm gonna have to to fold his only bet here would probably be all in and I can't call an all in 28 I'm I'm not I'm not very excited about even calling this bet but there's just no way I can fold getting what am I getting six to one five to one there's just no way so I'm gonna have to call and I, I hate having to do it but I'm just gonna have to look him up here okay so 410 uh, very interesting so I I believe he did flop a flush draw on the flop and then he caught a pair on the turn so I guess post flop he didn't play it too horribly I can't understand why he would even bet on the river there if he's gonna bet he should he should shove he's never you know he's never gonna get me to fold what has to be at least a pair for me in that spot or at least top pair I should say with the way I played it and, and I'm gonna have better than that the way I played it sometimes too so he's definitely someone I'm just gonna mark as as soft right now so on the hand I got check raised on that would be you know pretty interesting to see what he might have had there I mean would he limp in with a hand like king queen king jack you know, maybe he did it with a low pocket pair maybe he just check raised me just because he felt like it I, I don't know but I just either way it's just not going to be profitable for me to continue on with the hand now I gotta assume he's probably gonna fire the turn and so what am I gonna do you know I, I don't have anything I have ace high you know I have a backdoor flush draw it's just it's just not good enough to, to continue so even though I was getting a pretty good price I believe he just min check raised me so medicine goat here at the top uh, got the rest of the, the fish's money so let's just hope another fish sits in but at least I, I got I got a good share I'll take I got about half a stack so you know, when I sit at the table with a fish, I'd be very happy to get half of the stack and break even with everyone else. And if I did that, every time I sat for the rest of my life, I'd be a very rich man. So I'm definitely not going to complain. I, I got my share. I got more than my share there. But it's always nice if you just reload. <laughs> so Jack 8 suited, under the gun, raised which really just amounts to hijack because we're five-handed um, he raises 18 percent so I mean this is it's an option to squeeze here but I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that so dumbass the guy that I had marked right away as a bad player in fact is he's uh, numbers are he's a 55 16 um, I actually ran into my first successful super lag player this week at ultimate bet uh, I I went to a site called mypokerintel.com uh, you know what I'm gonna pass on the 7-4 suit he's almost sure to call and I don't wanna play that hand that position uh, but I found this site that I heard about and it basically tracks everyone at ultimate bet and it had over a hundred thousand hands on this guy and he was like a 60 40 or something crazy uh, I'm gonna 
isolate him again. Let's fix the receiver. But he was marked as someone who'd won like four big bets at 400 no limit. So that's pretty incredible. I, you know, I had him marked. I hadn't really played with him, but I just kind of assumed he wasn't very good from the minute I saw his numbers. I'm going to fold King Jack Suited. Uh, very unlikely to have hit him. Hopefully it doesn't keep hitting him like it did the other guy, apparently. Um, but, you know, I have to fire on a board like that, and he calls. And so what can I really put him on at this point? Um, you know, Queen is certainly a possibility. Um, a middle pocket pair is certainly an option. Uh, I just can't justify... I, I think I just have to shut down here, though, because of just how bad he is. I, I think he'll call me down with anything. He's So... You know, and he only has half a stack, so I don't I don't really have enough, uh, you know, firepower to get get after him. Um, maybe he'll have pocket threes here. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, ace jack. So I mean, he'll call with ace high, pot size bet, out of position. I I just I wouldn't advocate it. So you know, I guess I it, it may have worked if I would have bet, but who knows? You know, he may have just called down. I mean, this guy is clearly bad. So, you know, good call by him. It turned out to be a good call, but, you know, that's only going to be a good call from him, like 1 in 10, maybe. And then he has to avoid me firing in on the turn or the river. So, you know, that's just not going to be profitable for him in the long run. So my two isolation plays have gone horribly wrong at this point. That's the way it goes sometimes. I still feel that I made the correct play. And when a player limps and I have pretty much any two cards that create any interest for me, you know, a suited connector, you know, an ace, anything, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and isolate and I just feel like it's gonna be a, a very profitable play in the long run. You know, sometimes, you know, bad players can lead to really high variance because, you know, it's hard to put them on a hand. They could call with anything. They play hands very strangely. And, you know, you're making isolation plays against them all the time. And, you know, if they, you get on a run where they don't work, you know, you're going to, next thing you know, you've gone through a whole stack's worth and all you've done is make isolation play in a continuation bet and had to give up, but <clears throat> that's the way it goes sometimes. As Doyle would say, I'm definitely on a free roll with the rest of their money that uh, that I uh, have taken from them, so I believe when Doyle describes being on a free roll with his, you know, he, he likes to get all his money in the draws and, and such, and and, uh, you know, I believe he was probably a bit of a pioneer of that sort of style. Um, but what he means on being a free roll is that he, he induces folds so often and wins these small, medium-sized pots that when he does get called, you know, he still has de decent equity in the hand when he gets called on his draw. And he's usually free rolling in a sense because he's stolen so much, so many pots. So he's just kind of playing with their money anyway. And then when he does get lucky in those hands, he wins a monster pot. So not only did he steal from them, but then he also stacked them. So queen seven off, you know, I'm, with a guy with a 55 B tip, I want to stick to um, somewhat solid hands because I'm going to get called almost every time. And apparently I, I'll get called with almost anything on the flop, and I just don't want to keep being in tough spots where I have to consider double or triple barreling against a guy that may call me down. Or I should say my only way to win the pot is to double or triple barrel against a guy who 
is likely to calm me down with very little. So I would much rather just play hands with solid values, hopefully hit the flop in some kind of uh, decent way, and just value them to death. That's that's the way you exploit these guys. So. Sometimes they make life difficult for you and you can't hit a flop, but you know, and they're calling you with ace high out of position. And they don't have enough of a stack for you to think about bluffing them on a later street. But you know I would if I had a table full of, again, if I had a table full of these guys, uh I would I would be a very rich man. <laughs> So 510 off, you know, clearly not good enough to play. Um, I haven't been very active on the 200 no limit game on the right side of the screen, and so I have to be a little bit conscious of that. And then I don't feel I have any multi tablers at my table, um, so these people are probably a little more aware of my actions than if I were at a table of. Uh, multi tablers and <clears throat> basically I can raise four or five pots in a row and a guy playing eight tables is not going to really catch on to that but if I play at a table full of guys just playing one or two tables they're going to be like hey this guy's you know thinks he can run over the table or this guy is raising a lot you know and then they might you know, it, it's going to affect their decision making. So I need to be aware of my image at tables, but I only need to really be aware of it if I'm playing against people who aren't multi-tabling, which it looks like at these tables, the only guy that's a multi-tabling, uh, that multi-tables for a living is Colonel Mustard. Uh, Queen 3 suited. Uh, against a raise, I defend very liberally here, and with two suited cards, I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend. So I caught a really good flop, and so I want to try to extract the maximum maximum value here, but at the same time, I don't want to, you know, I have to be a little bit careful because, if, you know, I have obviously have severe kicker issues if he has a queen also. So I'm just gonna toss in a little raise here. And let's just see kind of how he interprets that. I'm going to make a continuation bet on the, the uh, you know, I got another great board for continuation bets, so let's just hope it works this time. And so it does. So he calls, and that is a disaster card. I, I really, uh, you know, the only thing I can beat at this point now is a flush draw. And so I'm just going to check behind, and I'll have to consider whether I want to call a, a river bet or not. Um, I'm actually feeling a lot better about this hand now that it, it's gone check check. The interesting thing is, do I dare bet it? Um, would he ever call me with a flush here? Is he just checking the ace? Um, I don't see how he could just check check an ace like that. But at the same time, he he might, you know. So and he did. So uh, you know, I, I'm glad I didn't didn't value about that. So an interesting way he played that there. I can't understand why he would check it twice there. I mean, I'm sure he could have gotten at least something out of me from the you know the fact that I had uh, you know a full house, even though it's really likely he has a, a better full house. So that was a bit unfortunate that I got two out of there. So I'm just going to call it the three. Um, this is a bit tricky. I think I'm just going to check middle pair here. I'll probably check and call. So I flop a set here. I think what I'm going to do is this guy's very aggressive. Uh, I take that back. He's, m he's more aggressive pre-flop. Post-flop, not so much. Um, I'm just going to bet it out and hope to get raised. Well, I'll probably try to go bet three bet. So he fires out a 
two thirds of the pot here. I, I think I need to call him. I'm not closing the action, but at the same time, I, I'm going to toss in one call here. Let's see what happens. So I'm just going to take the show down here. Okay, so we have the same hand. And he's not raising me at any point, so I have to just really consider what I put him on right now. I put him on certainly an ace. I put him on pr probably, he might be carefully playing because we are deep, a hand like ace-king. I'm not going to make too big of a bet here because I really don't want to scare him off. I really think a pot size bet might get a fold. I think this is maybe the sweet spot, but maybe he didn't have an ace. Maybe he just had... Um, you know, flush draw, or, you know, he could have anything, he raises so much, so, or so often. Uh, King 8 suited, is, is, I'm going to certainly fold. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, there are a few different ways I could play those threes. I could check raise a flop. Uh, I don't really like check calling too much because, that, I don't know, I just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's just going to be very difficult to get the money in on the later street. King 10 off, I'm going to raise. Okay, so I'm just going to really hope he has a hand here because you know, the guy limps under the gun. It's very, you know, it would be a little early to be making an isolation play, but he certain, certainly could be. So I'm going to make my raise. We're not totally deep. I'm going to make my raise a little less than pot. Just hope, hoping to encourage action. I don't, it's not something I do regularly. It's not something he's going to pick up on. So, um, you know, again, I, I hope this is a raise with a big hand, but, oh, Limp re raise all in, so let's just pray to God that's ace king. If it's kings, that's a great too. Queen. Wow, that's a really dangerous flop there. That's pretty ugly. So I get stacked. That's unfortunate. Maybe someday I'll run a little better in the videos for you guys. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to fire into two people with king-queen. 3-8 uh, deuce flop, very unlikely to hit someone, and I could consider double barreling, especially against a deeper stack. But check raise is just an insta-fold for me. So I'm going to continue to just isolate him again. That's, you know shorter stack, you know, he could be making that play with like a pocket sevens, pocket fives, but um, I just don't have the uh, ability to, you know, try to take it away from him on a later street given his stack size. So I'm going to bet 30 into a $40 pot here, a three quarters pot. I generally bet a little bit more, but his stack's shorter, and so I usually adjust my bet sizes to shorter stacks a little bit. And um, 70 in the pot already. He, you know, this could be just like a pair of sixes or something. And you know, either way, I've got to have a lot of outs. I'm just going to go ahead and play for my stack here with him and hope for the best. So you know, I got my money and probably a slight favorite. So we'll just see how it goes. So nothing I can do there really. I got my money in. You know, it was definitely a positive EV play, especially you know, given his cards, and that's kind of what I put him on with something like that. And you know, I had an overlay in the pot, so that's you know part of what where the profit's going to come from there is that you know I got my money in only a slight favorite, like one or two percent maybe. But there's seventy dollars in the pot, so odds are I'm going to say win half the time, lose half the time. So I'm gonna 
you know, net profits like $35 on that play. So I just have to, I, you know, it's a, sure it adds to variance, but I can't turn down a play that makes $35. Hope I explained that right. So ace king, I'll certainly raise that from first position. Five six two. I would prefer to be in the cutoff before I'll make a raise there. Uh, sometimes, you know, it just depends on the on who's to the left of me and who the blinds are. Uh, these guys are, you know, definitely capable of three betting me somewhat light. So and, and definitely are going to float me fairly often. So I, I really want to avoid those spots. So we get a limp. Dumbass raises to 18. So I can make a case for just calling here. I can also make a case for re raising. He seems to play. My guess is he's probably going to play somewhat straightforward on the flop. I don't. I would. I think I'm just going to go ahead and re, re raise. And we'll see sort of how he reacts. And, you know, I think his play should be fairly straightforward. So queen 5-4. Uh, I'm just going to call it the ace. And I'll, I'll check raise this flop. Queen 5-4. I'm just going to bet 100, and that'll be the last money I put into the pot. You know, if he shoves, not much I can do. You know, he can only shove ace, queen queens, kings, and aces. Everything else I should take it down. So he calls. I, I think I just have to shut down here. So another queen. This is I'm just going to check. So the check raise worked at least. <laughs> I'm just going to check and, you know, if he if he shoves, I, I'm going to have to fold. Yeah. So that's too bad. Ah. A way to make me look bad in front of my video. <laughs> uh, that's just so bad. I, I can't even really... You know, I mean, I, I just can't imagine how he thinks he's going to get away with that play and have that be even remotely profitable. Uh, to try to outplay me when I when I look like I'm making a bet, like I want to get it all in. I, you know, I'm looking pretty committed to this pot. I, I just don't understand. Well, I mean, I do understand. People play recreationally. They like to bluff people and you know, that makes them feel good when they get away with it, so much so that they'll they'll show you. But what can I say, you know? I, I'm sure I've thrown away the best hand a thousand times, but you know, I, I just don't I just don't see how I can call off my stack there given the action. When he puts in a call on that flop bet, that's it just seems like yeah, there's not much chance I can be ahead. So I still feel good about the way I played the hand and unfortunately it didn't work out and also that you know he felt the need to try to rub it in my face. This is also very inconsiderate too when you consider that um, you know I've clearly had a lot of unfortunate luck at this table and I'm sure he's seen all that and then he also feels the need to to r rub it in my face. So, you know, takes all kinds in this world. So, it's just the way it goes.
eight seven suited, definitely a hand I'll look to get involved with here. Um, the button just limps. I could take the initiative and raise, but I think I'm just going to check and just you know see what happens on the flop. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to just bet it right out. I caught a you know decent piece of the flop, and we'll just see where I stand. So that's fine. You know, my hand's also very vulnerable, so I don't mind giving it some protection. You know, I really would like to make a video and, and, and you know, have it go well and, you know, let you guys see some good things happening. You know, but unfortunately it's just kind of... You know, king, 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 queen suited. I'm going to re-raise here. Unfortunately, this is you know a lot of how my year has gone so far. I've just kind of been, you know, running into a lot of really tough stretches, and you know, there's not there's not really anything I can do about it. You know, I mean, as you can see, I I got my money in in two great spots. I got kind of ridiculously outplayed on the ace king. You know, you can call it outplayed, but it was kind of one of those things that it's like. You know, it's, you know, sure, if anybody can, if I tried to outplay a guy on every single hand, I'm going to outplay him a lot. You know, if I'm just willing to just put my stack in with ace high all day, you know, he's going to fold a lot. But that's so exploitable, it's not even funny. So, you know, I can just check, call, check, call, let him, you know, or just check, check and let him bluff all in and I call. You know, so you can, there's an, any, you know, million ways to exploit these guys. But, you know, so I, you know, I've run into a little bit of tough luck, but it's just, it's kind of the way the year's gone. I've had some decent little stretches, but, you know, I'm just really looking forward to having it going well again, and, you know, I, I feel really confident that that, that time for me is, um, is going to come really soon. A6 off, I'm going to just fold. Um, I really am tightening up my game just a little bit at this table due to the fact that <coughs> this guy with 55 uh, V pip is here, and the reason why is I'm going to get called a lot, and I'm going to miss the flop, you know, as much as he is, and he's also going to, you know, call me down really light. So, you know, I'm just going to get in a lot of, a lot of tricky spots. So, I would still, you know, that being said, I'm not going to tighten up so much that I'm not going to play some positive implied odds hands like. You know, even a 5-8 suited, 9-10 uh, suited, you know, even a junkie, you know, queen-8 suited, something like that. I'm going to play those hands still because those can make big hands due to the fact that they make flushes. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna kind of shy away from offsuit junk hands, like a 6 there, even on the button. Well, button, I'll, I'll raise it, but uh, cut off, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid it. And so it's just a little adjustment that... I'm going to make due to this guy. You know, I want to get involved in a lot of pots with him because he's bad, but I don't want, I want to do it with hands that, you know, don't put me in really tough spots. They either make, you know, they either hit the flop hard or they don't. I'm going to re-raise there with Queen Jack suited. Um, a lot of it is due to the fact that I'm somewhat deep with him, and so if he calls, I can maybe win a big pot. Uh, also, is because he, he's pretty loose. Uh, he has probably a, a pretty wide range here, and I figure to be doing just fine against his range. And, and you know, a lot of it is just to hopefully take it down, just like I did. You know, to make what did I make fifteen dollars on Queen Jack suited? Is certainly way ahead of what my expectation is on that hand. So I'm definitely happy with that result. Uh, black zero on his back. Um, to kind of get to the way he played those queens, um, I really feel that that was a terrible play. Also, uh, I don't. When it goes, you know, under the gun limp, raise, re-raise. You know, your queens really shrink up. I in, you know, he's going to get called a lot given the action, and when he gets called, he's going to be a four to one dog. So I really think that 
you know, that's a spot where he can just kind of go, hey, you know, I was going for the limp re-raise and it didn't work. Uh, I think he can get away from it there. It's a very, you know, I guess he could put in a call. But even then, that's really, it's a really a dicey spot because, you know, if the flop comes 7-5-2 or something or 10-5-2, you know, it's going to look pretty tempting to want to check raise all in if you're him. And, you know, but the reality is, is he still, I still have that same range of hands regardless of the fact that the flop looks good to him. So um, he's still behind my range and I just, I don't like his play. But it worked very well for him, obviously. So, what do I know? So I get re-raised. That can mean a number of things, because I think I have re-raised him a couple of times. And this is pretty interesting here. He calls two queens. And I have ace-king. If there is ever a spot to just ditch it, you know, and a case could be made here because what he has is sort of unknown and also there's a chance that at least somebody also has like ace king ace queen the likelihood of me hitting a flop goes down uh, that said I'm still going to put in a call but it is close a king 7-3 I mean that's like the dream flop for ace king however I am out of position and really, you know, over 150 big bets deep against this guy. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I could, I could bet and, and as surprising as it may sound to you, fold any aggression or what I'd like to also do is just, I think I'm just going to check here and given all the action and all his calls, see what he does. So, now I'm starting to feel really good about having the best hand. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flat call this this raise or this bet. He just open pushes. That you know, truthfully, I'm not happy about that because it can mean a number of things. You know, he could have aces, but I, I just can't fold here. And you know, I definitely don't put him on flopping a set. So it's going to be he probably doesn't have me. But if he shoves, I'm gone. Okay, so same hand. And that was, I, I kind of figured that, really. Yeah, I figured the only thing he's calling too cold with there are queens or ace-king. And so when he fires out like that, you know, I was hoping that he would have the queens and just figure since the flop got checked around, maybe he had the best hand. So that's mainly the reason I put in the call, plus the, you know, the pot size is already decent. You know, it was a little bit risky because he could be trapping. That is a, you know, really good flop to trap with aces. Um, I'd almost rather let him maybe make something here. Something maybe I can get paid off. I think, you know, he, he limped in, he checked. It just, it's probably not going to have anything he can call me with. And so, yeah. I'll just go ahead and bet, bet pot. You know, if he, you know, I generally don't slow play, but he is shorter stacked, so I can get the money in easier if I, if I do decide I want to play for stacks. And also, you know, he limps in, he checks, just very unlikely as anything, you know, and maybe he can make a top pair or something on the, on the turn, and, you know, maybe I can win a small to medium pot, so that was my, re my logic behind checking there. <coughs> so I've been feeling a little under the weather lately, so that's part of my uh, coughing problem here, but I hope you guys can forgive me. So Queen 5, I'm going to just go ahead and try to isolate him. He just posted. So I, I think this play is profitable. I think he's going to, I think I'll take it down pretty often here, either pre-flop or with a continuation bet. I prefer somewhat, you know, more of a hand, but, you know, it's, it's enough. Uh, queen 6-2, I, 
it. I'm just going to check. So I did catch middle pair. I'm just going to bet 16 into a 22 pot. I don't need to bet, you know, as much as I usually do because he's short stacked. I'm just going to give it, give it to him here. And so that worked out well. You know, I really don't mind him calling because he's going to, I'm still going to, that's profitable too. You know, he's putting me in a spot where he's going to miss the flop most of the time, and I'm going to uh, make a continuation bet and take it down. King 7 suited. You know, I've, I isolated him last time. I'm not on the button. And I don't want to, I don't want to give away the fact that I'm just going to isolate him all day to my opponent. So I'm going to give up on this one. Although it's close. But I don't want people to just be like, oh, as soon as this guy sat down, he's going to just isolate him all day. And then they're going to start three betting me white. So I'd rather, in a marginal spot, let it go in that particular spot anyway. But isolating is certainly okay as well. So while I am making, you know, a quote-unquote inst instructional video for you guys, I do want you to remember that, you know, like you guys, I am still learning, and you know, my game's at a pretty, pretty good level. But you know, at the same time, I don't want you to think, you know, everything I say is exactly, you know, perfect, or that, you know, wh whatever I play, play I make must be the correct play, because that, that's far from it. I'm still learning like you guys, and, and uh, you know, while, while I, I, you know, play well and, and play for a living, uh, you know, I still, I'm still, you know, got a ways to go in terms of becoming a truly world-class world player, which is where, where my sights are set. So this is going to be my last orbit on both the tables. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, I'd also like to mention, I mentioned this in my blog, but I'd also like to mention it on the video that if anyone is interested in losing a thousand dollars in a session, no, I'm just kidding. Um, if anybody's interested, uh, you guys uh, can private message me um, to get uh, individual coaching. I'm now offering that, and uh, I've already had several uh, people asking about it, and so I just want to let everyone know that you know I'm offering that, and you can private message me at any time, and I'll I respond to that pretty quickly. So feel free, and maybe we can uh, I can help you guys out. So even though it's just a two dollar bet, which is you know, another bad play. I'm going to fold the ace jack. Um, a lot of times when I get led into like this, you know, it, it usually means a, a very big hand or a hand that, you know, is just top pair or something like that, or maybe it could be a big draw in this case. But I, on a dry board like a jack 7-2 and he leads into me, I'll, I'll generally raise him a substantial amount, and that usually works pretty well. But on these kind of boards, you know, I could have, I could raise him and he might shove like, you know, a draw. So, you know, he's just more inclined to want to continue on on a board like that. So that'll wrap up the video. And, you know, again, if anybody wants to uh, get any poker coaching, uh, let me know. Uh, private message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care.